Hey, well, hello. This is going to be the uh, coaching video for those who are going to be leading, facilitating an uh, on-campus small group that's meeting on Sunday, May the 17th. So if that's you, you got the right spot. Hey, a couple of things to do. First of all, go ahead and uh, print out that uh, lesson manuscript that you uh, hopefully received in this email with a link to this particular video. Uh, go ahead and get that copy out there in front of you. You can use that to jot down, take some notes as we talk through uh, some things that hopefully will be helpful for you as you prepare uh, to teach or, or guide your on-campus small group. Now, we're still in the series that we're calling Aliens Among Us. And uh, as you know, we've been studying through the book of First Peter. And in that study, we've been focusing on the fact that God has called us to be holy. And, and he's called us to be set apart from something, but more importantly, to be set apart to someone. And that being set apart to Christ, that we're to live our lives in a way that reflects the reality of Jesus in the world in which we live. And we've been looking at how that kind of gets worked out and what does that mean. And, and many times that does mean that we're going to appear to be aliens. We're, we're going to appear to be strangers. We're, we're going to see that we don't fit in the way that, that, that the uh, the, our culture, our society would think we should fit in, in our relationships that we have with others and how we respond to what's going on around us. And we saw that specifically last week in a way of how we respond to certain authorities. And in a similar way, we're going to be looking at that this Sunday as we look at the message out of 1 Peter 3. And, and this uh, lesson that you've got here in front of you is going to be that which is a complimentary lesson in that regard. Now, this lesson that we're going to be looking at is going to be focusing from a psalm, Psalm 127. So grab your Bible, get it open uh, there to that, where you can kind of look, re follow along as we look at this, uh, this lesson and kind of maybe help you walk through this particular psalm. It's a, it's a fairly short psalm. Uh, most of our scholars, Bible scholars, would think that Solomon is actually one that penned this psalm. And, and in keeping that in perspective, you would look at the book of Ecclesiastes. It's what we call a wisdom literature. It imparts wisdom, guidance, direction that God gives to us. And specifically, it's going to talk about, this psalm speaks about the guidance that God gives to us, the wisdom he gives for us for, for our families. Uh, he talks about the house uh, the house of uh, house or household or home in, in here makes reference to that. It's the fact is in, in, in uh, the first part of the psalm that unless God builds the house, it is built in vain and is futile. And that picks up with that theme out of Ecclesiastes where he talks about, uh, Solomon talks about there that life lived without God is futile, is foolishness, uh, it's, it's, it's nothing to it. And that's what the emphasis here is in this Psalm 127. Unless a house, i.e. a home or household, a family, uh, has God, not just God involved in it, but unless it's built upon God, then it's really, uh, there's no nothing to it. And so we're going to be looking at that Psalm and focusing on that. Now, as always in your lesson, manuscript that you have, there's an introductory part that kind of gives you an overview of what we're getting ready to talk about. Uh, and then you move into actually a literal inter introduction itself. Hey, the introduction there uh, is something you ought to uh, look at. A uh, good way to kind of orient your, your uh, group members uh, to what you're going to be talking about. It's some fun stuff in there as well. And then we move into uh, to teaching the text. And then at the end, obviously, there's a conclusion uh, and application moment. So let me do this for you. I just want to kind of give you a big idea of what we're going to be looking at. I want to talk to you about a couple of things in the text and kind of the two major points that kind of pulled out of that text, and then we'll kind of just wrap it up, okay? Now, in this psalm, I kind of give you a little bit of background. Uh, most Bible scholars think that Solomon is the one who wrote this psalm, and again, it's in the context of the wisdom literature uh, that gives us insight uh, for living and living life God's way. Uh, you know, book Ecclesiastes, he, he talks there about uh, how life lived under the sun. In other words, life without God, there's nothing to it. And so the same sense is brought here into this psalm, Psalm 127. Uh, in fact, you might want to go back and look at the book of Ecclesiastes, the first couple of chapters especially, kind of get an orientation if you don't uh, remember or, or not had opportunity to say that before, kind of see where Solomon's coming from in that regards with this, what we call lit wisdom literature. And in these, five, these, uh, these verses here in Psalm 127, uh, he's going to basically give us some, some insight um, for raising a godly children or a godly fam family. Now, here, here's the thing to keep in mind. The principles that we're going to pull out of this psalm, those principles are going to be uh, 
applicable to other areas because you may have some people in your small group and depending on the nature of your group stage of life and so forth that either are not actively now involved in the process of raising children or don't have children um, maybe they're they're single adults college students whatever it is but these principles are going to apply as well to having a uh, to, to raising up a godly business uh, to growing a godly church uh, to creating a godly environment wherever you find yourself. So that, keep that in mind as you get ready to, to, uh, uh, to lead your group. By the way, on page 5 of your manuscript, the, one of the gray-shaded areas that oftentimes has teaching tips for us, there's a section there called Target Your Group. And take a moment to read that. kind of follows up on what I was just speaking to you about in that regard. Now, in the psalm, there's going to be, uh, in, this, in the teaching the, the text, uh, there are basically two points that we're going to pull out of this text. One is that it has to start with God. If you're going to raise, raise up or ha create a, uh, a, have a, develop a godly home, uh, a godly family, a godly household, a business, whatever it may be, it starts with God and it ends with God. Uh, because only God can truly develop a godly home, household, family. Uh, can Only God can raise godly children. Now, here's something to keep in mind. Does that mean then, if only God can do it, then we as parents would say, okay, God, we're going to sit back, you do it. Obviously, that's not, that's not the case. That, that's foolishness to think that. So what's the other option? The other option is to say, okay, God, only you can develop a godly household family. You can develop only a godly children. Then I need to come to you and work under your direction and be responsible for what you've given me and work under your direction in doing just that. In other words, I got to come to you, God, and I got to come to you to find out how to do that. Uh, by the way, there's a passage that I think would be helpful for you in thinking this through. Another Old Testament passage to look at, Deuteronomy chapter 6. I would read through the whole chapter and kind of giving you some background and then focus on verses 4 through 8 and see how, uh, how what we just mentioned, God gives instruction for the, the, the Hebrew people, the Jewish peoples are moving into this promised land he has for them, how that they are to build into their families and help develop their families and develop godly household, uh, raise godly children, and so forth. And look how that starts off. Uh, it starts with God, it ends with God, and then there are some things, though, that those parents are responsible for under the direction of God. So Deuteronomy chapter 6 can give you some further insight into that. The, the second uh, point that we're going to really pull out of this psalm, which is the last few verses of the psalm, has to do with stewardship. And thinking of this is that we are stewards, we are managers of what God has given us. And in the context of this psalm, it's talking about a home, a family, and, and children specifically. And we are stewards of children. Just as God makes us stewards of, of other resources, uh, he has get made us stewards of our children because they ultimately are a gift from him. Uh, they're not our children. They're really God's children because he's given them to the, us and he's given them to us and, and placed us under uh, placed them under our care. Now, as a steward, we are responsible for what God has placed under our care. And so being a, responsible for, for those children, uh, you know, we're going to basically be charged with, with several things. We're going to be charged to provide for them and the practical things they have. We're going to be charged to uh, protect them in the different stages of life, and we're going to protect them as that protection is needed in different ways in the different stages, phases of life. And then thirdly, we're going to be charged to prepare them and prepare them to live out the life that God has for them. We're, we're charged to help them develop and become uh, godly people themselves. So the question is, how do we do that? How do we do that? Well, as we mentioned before, it starts with God, it ends with God. So that means if we're going to want to raise up godly children in, in a godly household, we've got to go to the one who is godly himself, and that's God. 
and we go to him and we because he loves our children even more than we love them. His desires for them are the very best desires. And so if we're going to find out what that is and how then we can communicate that and help our children understand that and embrace that, then we've got to go to God and we've got to go to him in prayer. And we pray and ask God to, to help us understand his desires for our children. We pray and ask God how we can help those communicate those desires to our children in a way that they can uh, embrace them, in a way they can catch them. And so we're going to pray, and, and because prayer puts us in connection with the God of the universe. Obviously, we're studying our Bibles. Don't misunderstand me. We're studying our Bibles, learning from our Bible, but we also must be praying and coming to God and putting our dependence upon him and saying, God, we've got to have you. We've got to have you involved. And prayer is a way where we lay aside our own arrogance. We lay aside our own pride. Prayer is a way where we come before God and we humbly say, God, I have to have your help. I have to have your insight. And as in raising a godly uh, children and seeking to, to raise up those who are going to live, who are going to be holy, going to be set apart from that which is not of God and set apart to God himself, then we've got to do it. It has to, has to have prayer, not just involved, but centered upon prayer. And so you've got to pray, pray for yourself and pray for insight from God. And then secondly, you want to be praying for your children and praying for God's, for God's desires to be known by them and to be embraced by them. Um, and you're going to see a lot of emphasis upon that in this particular lesson. And the application moment is there on page nine, kind of gives you a little blurb about what that's about. And then your uh, handout for your uh, small group to work through is going to be on page 11. And you're going to see that this application moment is going to focus on this aspect of prayer. Hey, I can't think of a better way for your group uh, to spend, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, not just a tag on at the end, but to make sure, I would encourage you to make sure you leave a little bit of time, uh, not a little bit, but leave a, a block of time so that you can pray together as a group and you can pray together in your small clusters. And, and you're going to see each one of these application moments or application uh, points has prayer is a challenge and a call for us to pray. Let's plan to do that. Let, let's plan to leave some time, a good block of time, in your small group discussion for that uh, this week. And then uh, the conclusions on page 10, kind of wrapping it up there. All right, have a great time studying together. Have a great time sharing together. Have a great time growing in the goodness and grace of God. Appreciate what you do in leading these groups. And uh, know you're going to have a super time uh, this Sunday working your way through Psalm 1. I've been restless on the inside, wondering about.